Welcome to the review of Gold Rush. The game was created by Sierra Online and released in 1988. It utilizes Sierra's AGI engine, which is used in many of the King's Quest games. If you haven't watched my review of the King's Quest and Black Cauldron, I would highly recommend watching those first, as this game utilizes the same engine. One of the first things you'll notice is you're presented with the storyline right from the beginning, which is an excellent way to introduce you to the game. So basically you play this character, Jared Wilson. So the primary mission is to make it to California for the gold rush. Of course, this takes place in 1848, and the game has all kinds of charm to it. I really felt like I was playing as Jared and back in 1848. And I really love this little intro. So there's Jared in the upper left. I mean, how cool is this? Jumping from scene to scene kind of has a Brady Bunch feel to it. So you start next to Jared's home in Brooklyn Heights, New York. And of course, the gold rush has not been announced yet. Now it may be hard to believe, the look at the color of these graphics. This is EGA, which is very limited graphic system, and Sierra really pushed it to the limits. You can move from screen to screen, just walking either left, right, up, or down. And you can enter buildings, doors animate as you open them. And just like the King's Quest series, you'll notice the upper left has a score and you have the typing capability at the bottom. For example, here we're trying to open this gate and it did not accept that command, but if we try to unlock it, then it works. Very much a mystery and clue oriented game. I love the perspective too is when you go inside a house all of a sudden the room blows up and you can navigate in between each room. Plus your character's size actually can change to give a different perspective. Gives more of a 3D realism to it. For example I walk to the right here and it automatically goes up the stairs and you come out the middle. Just little touches like that give the game a lot of charm. There's also various special views or perspectives in the game. Like here we're looking out on part of the city and in the background you can see the lake or the river. And here you can see the boat coming up the dock. And as I mentioned earlier, your character icon can actually be larger too at times. Or it can be a little flashing icon with a zoomed out perspective such as these. Here for example we're walking around this fort and I go in the door there and I'm coming out the back side over here. There's also overhead views. Here are ships traveling to this island. Here we're crossing the United States. Sometimes it zooms in once you get to certain areas. The game has a built-in help menu, which is very useful. And just like the other Sierra games, you can save, name the games whatever you want. 
One really cool aspect of this game is that it's real time. So even if you're just standing around or walking around, the seconds will tick by. The game has an inventory like the other Sierra games. And you can even look at the graphics on each inventory item. Again, it really gives the game a wonderful adventure feel, like you're really there. You can also read books at certain times. The game is so detailed you can even see people pacing back and forth behind the windows in that house in the back. I mean, how many games do you know of from this time, 1988, had details like that? There's also cute little things like you can read this sign that tells you to keep off the grass and if you step on it you hear some doom music play. And then a police officer will give you a ticket. The game is pretty much a scavenger hunt most of the time, so in a case like this we're going to the bank to try to withdraw our money. It asks what your account number is, which actually changes every time you play the game. That's a really cool touch. Here we're reading a letter from Jared's brother, and here's a little puzzle that you can try to figure out. Basically, Jared's brother was kidnapped. So here we finally meet someone later in the game, and he asks us a bunch of questions, and we're trying to find our brother. And the score is really fun. It helps you to figure out how well you're doing, plus it helps with replayability. For example, here someone was waiting to buy our house, and we waited too long, so we didn't maximize our points. Sometimes you have to buy certain items and they're critical depending on how you're trying to get to California. That's my only pet peeve about this game is early on in the game if you don't make the right decision to buy something you can be totally screwed later on and how would you know? Basically I guess that makes you keep replaying the game and trying until you figure it out. Another thing I really love about this game is the sense of community Probably the number one game for me with community is Ultima 6. Well this game comes pretty close with all the different NPCs and people you can talk with. So eventually as you're waiting around and walking around the main town you finally receive this announcement that the gold rush is on. So now it's your chance to try to get to California as quickly as possible. So the game has three different ways where you can get to California. All cases you must sell your house first. And depending on when you decide to sell it, you could either make more or less money. If you wait too long and the gold rush is already announced, then you're not going to get as much. There's three ways to get to California. Two are by boat. One is through Cape Horn and one is through Panama. And the other is by land across the whole United States. If you try to go by boat and you wait too long to buy a ticket, the ship can actually leave without you. Then you're forced to go by land. You can see the ship leaving in the background here. Nice little touch. We missed the boat, so we're stranded and now we have to go the stagecoach route. And now that we're buying the ticket a little late, it's going to be expensive. So this game has very much a timing aspect. Here we show our ticket and the coach pulls up for us to get in. Once you get in the coach, you approach a ferry. Or the ferry approaches you. And then, of course, you get on.
And one nice little touch is you're told how you're doing so far. It displays a score telling you how many points you got out of the maximum. And it also tells you if you're missing something important. Then you're presented with this overhead view of the United States with a nice little graphic showing you what's going on and all kinds of text messages. If you hit F8 you can display details of the text messages or you can basically skip scenes. You'll see a little cursor and path appearing to show you your progress. So from Chicago you go down to Missouri and then eventually you land in a camp and now you're back to the traditional walking around scenes. So you're back to the mystery aspect where you have to figure out what to do. In this particular case we need to buy some horses and of course you have three choices so you have to figure out which one's the best to use. And if you make the wrong choice whether to leave too early, too late, or with the wrong horses, you're going to end up dying. Speaking of dying, you can get run over by a wagon. You can get mugged by natives with spears. Incidentally, the game does have some humor. Look at the names of these natives. Nice shot, Harry. All in a day's work, Frank. You can be dehydrated, in which your character appears as a slumped animated icon. And of course die from this problem. Or maybe you fail the quest because your animals are too weak from having lack of grass. So now I'm going to show you the path for taking the ship. So in this particular case we are taking the short ship route which goes through Panama. And of course it shows you sailing through the ocean and eventually you'll reach a shore by the Panama area. It's cute little music. And eventually you will reach the place where they try to mug you and you'll have to figure out what to do from there. You face other hazards too like quicksand Or you may have to figure out how to avoid these ants. Haha, grab the vine. But that isn't the only route. You can take the Cape Horn route, which is cheaper, takes longer to get there. And in this case, you actually get to explore the ship. But I'm not going to show you every scene, so you can have some fun when you play this game. But regardless of the three routes, you will always end up at the same place, Sacramento, California. Here you appear as a little flashing icon walking around, and you have to figure out how you get out of this screen into here where you start exploring and making your way over to a fort. But eventually after exploring the fort and finding out what to do, now it's time to actually mine for some gold. You'll notice that when you're walking in the wilderness there's a position indicator how far east and south you are. And I just wanted to see what the limit was for the number of screens because it just seemed so vast. And I finally hit it. 255. 
which of course is 8-bit. So they used an 8-bit number to track how many screens there are. Here you can see a miner in the river panning for some gold. And this one's out here in the wilderness. So although the purpose of this game is to make it rich by striking gold in California, there's a secondary kind of side quest going on, which is to find your brother who's been kidnapped. But I don't want to give any clues or details on either one of these and how to do it because it's a fun game and I hope you all enjoy playing it. So overall this game was very enjoyable for me. I loved the colorful graphics and all the clues you had to try to find. I love the fact that it has a score so that it has replayability and that there's various routes you can take in order to complete the game. That was almost unheard of in its time. The monotony was also broken up by having these special views or perspectives. Another thing that really added to the adventure feeling of the game. And the community of having so many people to talk with and the fact that you can even buy or trade for items. I really wish that I knew about this game when I was a kid, but I think that it just wasn't advertised or marketed very well. I highly recommend this game, especially for those that like the King's Quest series and never experienced this. So I hope you enjoyed this review, and I'll see you next time.